Welcome to the Multi-Taction Canvas Tutorial Series. This is part two of the Menu Options Tutorial. We're going to be taking a look at the Finger Menu, or Canvas Menu, that gives us the options to operate directly on the canvas and directly on the objects that are on the canvas. So, here we are on a quiet part of the canvas, and let's bring up the Finger Menu. Okay, the first thing to say about this is this menu is going to be a little bit different if you're looking at a multi-taction display. The centre part here with the three sections of the finger eraser and pen will not be visible on your menu. I'm not using a multi-taction display and this display isn't smart enough to figure out if I'm using my finger or a pen or an eraser. So I have to tell it by using the context switcher which is in the middle there. A lot of the other menu options on here though are exactly the same. So let's begin at the top and work our way around. So the first option on our menu is the image search. This is a great way of getting content directly onto the canvas. Simply typing your search argument, hit search, and you get the list of images that has been found. And any image that's in this list, you can simply select, drag, and drop directly onto the canvas. The next menu item on the finger menu is the web search. This is similar to the image search except it throws you straight into the Google search engine. Now just like any other browser window you have to pin it before you can actually interact with it and so you can type in your search argument and go ahead and hit search and it was literally just like using a browser straight on the PC. Now, the next one is Toolbox, but we're going to come back to that in a moment. So let's try just to the left of the image search is the Create a Note option. And as you can see, each time I do that, I have the option of a different color note. The notes themselves can actually change color. That's one of their object options, and we'll go through object options in another tutorial. It's really quick just to create notes on the canvas. and You can annotate those either directly with the keyboard or you can write on them if you switch to pen mode. You can write straight on the note as well. The next option we'll look at in the finger menu is the snapshot. It's a little picture of a camera, and you can move that around the canvas. Anything that's underneath that box when you hit the button will be snapshotted. But it has a small resize option in the bottom of the box, and you can resize that to include anything that you want to in the picture. So when you hit the snap, it literally takes a picture of whatever you selected. The next option on our menu is the folder option. This literally takes me to a folder that's been defined on the server that NT Canvas is running on. Now your system may be set up differently because this may go to a network file share. But to all intents and purposes, it will look the same. You're just navigating a file structure to get content. So I can jump into different folders, and I can just touch, drag, and drop content directly out onto the canvas. At the bottom of the finger menu, we have the undo, redo buttons. And these are quite useful if you're doing a lot of annotation. So if I switch to pen mode and start taking some notes, Now, if I bring the finger menu back up, I can undo those steps. And it's a quick way of getting rid of something if you need to redo it. So if actually that wasn't note 3, that was in fact note 2.5. Now let's take a look at the toolbox options on the finger menu. The first option is a projection window. Now this boundary box that you see here has a draggable corner in it, which means I can resize the box to anything I want. Anything that's inside of this box when I turn on video projection means that that area will be transmitted down the HDMI outline from Canvas. So if you've got Canvas connected to, say, a Cisco or Polycom conferencing system, this could be the way that you control the content for that. Now, you can if you want to, with the option down here, and we covered this in the previous tutorial, 
actually send the entire viewport, so everything that you can see on the screen, down the line. Or you can send individual objects. Now, in this case, I can put anything underneath there. So I could write on the background of Canvas right now with annotation, and that is what you would see because it falls inside of that box. And if I turn that on, it changes the color to magenta and tells you that's the video output stream. Now this becomes really useful when you think about using it on your entire canvas. So if I bring up that same option, you'll see that if I now turn that on, anything that's underneath that window will get seen down the line. So it's a great way of showing part of, say, a complex diagram or part of the display. So everything I move this little, think of it like a magnifying glass that I'm moving over parts of the display. And as I do that, that's what other people will see on the transmission line. Now, for more information on this, have a look at the tutorial that we put together on outputs from Canvas because we cover this in more detail. The next option in the toolbox is anchor points. Now we covered anchor points in the previous tutorial, part one of the menu system, but we'll go over it again here. Anything you can put inside this boundary box can be page marked, which means that you can jump to it later on. Now you can see already we've got quite a complex canvas here with lots of content on it. So if I go ahead and have a look at my anchor menu, which is over here on the right hand side, you can see I've got some anchors defined and simply jumping to that area of the canvas shows me the content that's been defined at, defined at that anchor point. You'll notice if you look at the header where you see the whole virtual canvas that every time I change the area that I'm looking at, that box which shows me exactly what I'm seeing on the screen is also changing and moving around the canvas. So it's a great way if you, for example, you want to use this as a presentation tool to tell a story where you can dynamically move through all of your content using the page markers. Creating an anchor point is very straightforward. We just go back into the toolbox, pull up the anchor. And how big or small you make this does make a difference to what happens when you jump to the anchor point. If I make an anchor point this small, for example, when I jump to that anchor point from the anchor list, it will actually expand the display to this size because it's not just a move, it's a move and zoom. Equally, if I made an anchor this big and created it here, when I jump to this anchor, everything will appear exactly as it is on here because there's no more zoom available. It's the same size as the screen. So again, the size does determine the effect it has when you jump to it. So to create the anchor, simply hit the Create Anchor button, type in the name, hit Done, and now you have an anchor point there. Now, if you come back later and want to change that, you can hit the pen icon on that menu list, and that allows you to actually resize and move the anchor before saving it again. Or you can delete it. The next option in our toolbox is the Register a Codis card. This actually doesn't work on this type of display. This is for a multi taction display. One of the things that sets the multi taction displays apart from any other form of touch system is the fact that it has cameras built into the display, which means it can read simple 2D barcodes, a bit similar to a QR code. And you can actually, if you're on an MT display, you could put the card in this area that's defined here and register that card, and it's a way of getting content from the canvas sent directly to your email address. It's a really nice facility, but not for us on this system. The next option is a live IP feed. Now, I don't have one connected to this system at the moment, but you can put an IP address of a live camera video stream or camera stream into this, and as soon as you have that connected, you can operate that just like contents, any other type of content on the canvas. And the final menu option in our toolbox is the table option. This is a really, really good technique for organizing content uh, on the canvas. You can click and drag however big you want the, uh, the box to be or the table to be, or you can simply just touch the uh, XY position and you'll get uh, that number of cells created in the table. 
Now you can change that if you want to. If you hit the pencil icon, which takes you into edit mode, you can actually add or delete rows or columns from the table. Now, if you have content created, so let's take, for example, just a simple post-it note, you can drag and drop that content directly into the table. You can equally take content from the web. So I could take an image and drag and drop that onto the canvas and drag that into the table. Now you'll notice that I can change the cell size simply by adjusting the boundary box and that affects all of the content in the cells. But the real power of the table is that you can put literally any, any content in here. So you could put live video streams if you had those coming in. You could put live web browser content. So for example, let's jump out to the web. And I can even just take this Google search and put that into the table. So let me give you an example of where I've used that elsewhere on this canvas. So if we jump to the main canvas area, in fact, I have an anchor point set up here on my brainstorming session. So you can see that these uh, lists of post-it notes look very neat, and that's because they're sitting inside of tables. So if I unpin this one, you can see I've just got these defined in a table. So when you do a brainstorming session and you throw all your ideas up on the wall into notes like this, the very next thing you typically have to do anyway is organize them. And the table is a great way of doing that. One final point on tables is just like a lot of the options, you can turn on projection mode. And we talked about that earlier in this tutorial. But imagine if I had a table with live video cells in it. I'd actually then be able to take that table and push that as the video output. This is just like using a video controller. So I could have a, a two by two, have four video feeds in there and send that all down the line to another system or a mirroring system or a conferencing system, depending on where you wanted that content to, to end up. So, so the tables are a really powerful feature within MT Canvas. So let's quickly review the canvas or finger menu options. We went through the image search and web search. We went through how to create notes, take snapshots. There was the folder option that allowed us to bring content onto the canvas or save items from the canvas into the folder. There was the undo redo buttons, which are quite useful with annotation. And then we looked at the toolbox where we had anchor points and we had the projection window that we can move around the canvas and we had the table function. So that concludes this second part of the menu options on MT Canvas. Thank you for watching.